As a volunteer board member, regardless of the type of nonprofit, it's necessary to take steps to reduce any potential loss or damage that could incur. So whether you're just joining a board or you are a longtime board member, we hope that you'll learn something new today. So welcome. We are going to take a deep dive today into um, what liability insurance is, what it's all about, what it covers, what um, who it covers, whether or not it's applicable to your group. And to help us figure this out, I have Carrie McDonald with me. She's from RB Nucio and Associates, and she um, has oodles of years of experience, dozens, um, in the insurance industry. So welcome, Carrie. Thank you for having me. So, Carrie, do you suppose today you could talk a little bit about what liability insurance is for those of us who don't really have a lot of clarity around that and maybe what it covers and who it covers? Sure. Liability coverage is often called uh, general liability coverage or commercial liability coverage. They're all the same type of coverages. Liability coverage covers for acts of negligence that the group may become legally responsible to pay to a third party for bodily injury or property damage. And it's a very broad policy. It covers not just property damage, but it covers personal injury, advertising injury, products liability, damage to rented premises, oftentimes sexual misconduct liability coverage, if that is on the policy. We have uh, supplemental defense cost coverage is what is very, very important in a general liability policy because that provides the attorneys to protect the groups in a claim, excuse me, and and or a lawsuit. So a general liability policy covers them for injuries that are going to happen. And I think examples are probably the best way to give what it may cover. Great. slip and falls, people slipping and falling and breaking an arm. And the group is negligent that that happens. A child getting injured on a carnival event. Again, uh, an injury from an item that they may have sold at a rummage sale at a, at, or they raffled off or an event like that. Also covers the volunteers. So we've had claims where they've had a book sale and a rack of books has fallen down on somebody and injured them. So it covers the volunteers as well uh, from injuries while they're providing services to the group and putting on, while putting on events. It ha- also has personal injury um, liability, which doesn't sound what it really is. Personal injury coverage is for third-party claims that come out of libel, slander, or defamation of character. So oh. it's not personal injury to a person physically, it's personal injury to a person who's been libeled, slandered, or defamed. Uh, and this is a common thing with these groups. I always thought that uh, under uh, directors and officers insurance. It doesn't. No, directors and officers does not cover that under that policy. Okay. And that's where a lot of people think that it, it does. It's covered under a general liability policy. And mm-hmm. what's covered under a general liability policy is specifically excluded under a director's and officer's liability policy. Okay, Okay. (laughs) that makes sense. (laughs) So the libel, slander, and invasion of privacy, those types of things that are covered under a personal injury uh, portion of the general liability policy, we're seeing more and more claims from that. Um, Oftentimes people go on social media, they make defaming marks, and the groups get named into a lawsuit. There's multiple types of things that can be claimed under a general liability policy. So it's a very broad policy and then is really driven by exclusions to the policy. And this is probably the the main policy and then we kind of add to that. Is that right? I feel for these groups, this this is the most important one that they should have statistically from a lawsuit or a claim standpoint. It gives them the most coverage for the events and the activities that they are holding and that they are running. So it's very important coverage for them to have. And even though they may think they may have coverage from the school, the school districts 
uh, and their insurance companies will try to separate out the group's legal uh, entity and force the lawsuit to be to be on the back of the parent teacher group uh, instead of the school. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And I know there are lots of other policies that groups can put into play in addition to the general liability. So we'll be talking about those in future podcasts. Yes. I wanted to just touch a little bit more on the liability policy mm-hmm. for these groups. It's very often that the school districts are now making these groups add the school districts to their policies as an additional insured. So what it, when they do this and a lawsuit or a claim comes up, the school's insurance companies will try to tender or give back the lawsuit to that group. And we don't want these groups to lose their insurance. And we want to have these groups maintain their the cost of their insurance. Because if we don't help them keep the cost of the insurance down, then they can't exist because right. the insurance can be become so expensive. Right. So it's always a good idea that when a group is fundraising or doing any type of activity, that they do it in conjunction with the school. It can be as little as putting it on the invitations to the events, you know, the the Harper Valley PTA um, and Harper Valley uh, School District are having the winter festival, you know, so that the attorneys will bring into the lawsuit both parties. Oh, okay. So it's, that's an important thing that, that these groups now, the school districts and municipalities are trying to lay off all of the insurance onto these small groups. So again, they should stick within the realm of what their policy covers and not go outside of the scope of what they should or should not be doing. That's a clear distinction to be made for sure. Thank you, Carrie, for giving us an education around what general liability insurance is all about and uh, who it covers and, and what it covers. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you.